Welcome back, guys. Um, so I put out a poll not too long ago, well, 13 days ago, and a viewer wanted me to create um, the clock image that was in my latest October earnings video. Um, so this is that video. Um, so here you go, SMS. I will create that video for you. Um, you're going to need a couple things. Uh, to make this work. Um, by the way, this is the image um, that the viewer wanted to see how I made it. Um, okay, so let's get started. The first thing we're gonna need, I'm gonna assume that you don't have a blank chalkboard laying around, so we're gonna create that uh, grungy background in Photoshop. And you're also gonna need an image of a clock on a solid background of some kind so you can cut it out in Photoshop and place it on the background that we're going to create. Um, so let's get some brushes for Photoshop and these will be free from Brush Easy. Um, so we'll go and oh, and I can't type back okay, brusheasy.com. Um, we're going to type dispersion and we'll click this first one, download. All right, so now that that's downloaded, we're gonna type um, grunge and close that. All right, so let's look. Um, Or let's filter this by brushes. Let's see. There was a simple one that I wanted here. Um, come on. I mean, we really could go with any one of these, but I just did it. And um, let's see in my downloads, simple, subtle grunge. Okay, let's type it. Yep, this one here. I'm going to go with that one and we'll hit download. All right, so now that we have those downloaded, we're just going to um, open them and they will open in Photoshop. All right, so now that we have those opened in Photoshop, the next thing we're going to do is open Photoshop. All right, so once we have Photoshop open, um, we're gonna create a new file. Um, let's see, we'll make it 21 megapixels, so 6,000 by 3,500, and it's horizontal, and we can leave the background as transparent, that's okay. Okay, let's verify that we have the brushes installed. So we'll click on the brush, we'll go up here, and just minimize this. Okay, so we have the sample and we have the dispersion brushes. Okay, so let's choose a background color. You will need a dark background. So we'll go to, um, we'll choose solid color and All right, that works for me. It's not entirely black. And then we're just gonna go over to the brush, create a new layer, and we'll select one of the grunge brushes that we downloaded. Okay, this one looks good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty nice actually. 
don't like the fact that it's it's squared and you can see the overlaps. Let's see how big we can make it. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, so on on the new layer, we're gonna choose a color, um, a dark light color. Um, and then we'll just do a few clicks. You know what, I'm gonna do these on separate layers so I can move, move them around. All right, so that turned out far better than I thought it would. Um, okay, let's move these layers a little. Let's move that up there. Move this over. We can even rotate it if, if necessary. But I just don't want to show the overlapping too much. We can make it bigger. All right, and then we'll just group all of these here. Um, Command G or Control G. And group them. And reduce the opacity just a little bit. 67 seems good. Good. All right, so at this point, you're going to drag in um, the image of the clock. So I have it over here. And All right, and then scale it to the size that you want it to be. Um, I think that's good there. Maybe a little bigger. Okay. Click OK. I'm going to make a copy of it. Just drag it to that plus sign. And we're going to remove it from the background. If you're in the latest version of Photoshop, you can just click on this object remove uh, or object selection tool. And I'm just going to highlight it or make a selection around it and it will select it for me and once it's selected you can also select this in multiple different ways you can use the quick selection tool and it will select it if it's on a plain enough background um, if it's not you can use the select and mask or you can use the pen tool to get a good selection overall the pen tool will probably be the better of all of these for making the cleanest selection, but it's not necessary for what we're doing here today. All right, so once I have the selection, selection I'm gonna click uh, Control J to isolate that the object on its own layer. And my mouse is acting crazy right now. <laughs> All right, so once we have it isolated, we can get off of that select um, object selection tool and we can hide this layer here and we have our object isolated on the background it's a little too light for this background at the moment but we'll take care of that uh, momentarily okay so now that we have that we're going to select it i'm also going to make a, a copy of it so i can come back to it if necessary we're going to go to Make sure you're on the layer. We're going to go to liquify. OK, so once we're here, we're going to select the bloat tool. So B for the bloat tool or just go to the toolbar and select it. And, you know, I can't make. There's no way I'm going to make it exactly like this, but I'm going <laughs> to. Uh, try and make it close. All right. 
Okay, so having the bloat tool, you're gonna, you know, um, increase the size of it almost to the size of the object you're uh, manipulating. Um, all right, so I'm, okay, so once you have it, you just press and move the mouse around slightly to bloat the object. You don't have to move the mouse, but if you do, it goes faster. I'm just distorting it a little bit here. All right, so once we have it distorted, we're gonna come over to the uh, the forward warp tool. Make sure this one is also fairly large. And then we're just gonna drag and pull. All right, so that looks good. Um, once it's done, we'll just click OK. And there we have the image distorted. OK. So we're going to go over to, let me also make a copy of this one, just so we can go back to it um, without needing to redo the, the liquify. All right, let's go back to our brush, and we're going to go to uh, the dispersion brush and we'll select the first one and see how that looks yeah that looks fine okay and we'll just create a mask on this layer here we'll get a mask and we're gonna hit the letter D to get our default colors hit the letter X to invert those colors so we have black um, as the, the foreground color. And then we're just gonna click on this edge ever so slightly. Okay, let me undo all of those. So what you want is for your dispersion to go from uh, small on the right side so small dispersion particles to large on the left side. So I'm going to click a few times up here. Okay, so I have those. Those are my large particles over there. I'm going to make my brush smaller. And then just click a bunch of times over in this corner and we we want some of it to to completely disappear and just kind of blend into the background there Yeah, every single one of these images that you create will be different. Um, it's almost impossible to create the create two of them that are that are the same. All right, so that looks good. Okay. Let me just group these and just... Rename it to, I don't know, um, recover, recovery. Okay, so now that we have that, that's looking pretty good. Um, let's adjust the, the brightness of that image. We're gonna 
come down and we'll select uh, curves and we're gonna clip it to the underlying layer there and just uh, bring down the brightness a little. Okay, let's reset that. Okay, that's that's a lot better. Okay, so that looks good. Um, yeah, so from this point on, we can also adjust the position of the clock. Good. And let's also make a slight um, shadow um, behind here. So for that, I'm going to use, let's see, an ellipse, uh, ellipse tool, ellipse shape tool. And then let's make a perfect circle about the size of our thing here. And we don't want to clip to. Um, let's see, release, release clip and mask. There we go. So about there is good. And bring it under that. Okay, and we're gonna rasterize this, so we're gonna click and rasterize layer, and then we're gonna blur that layer. So Gaussian blur. And that one is good, and then we'll reduce the opacity Twenty-eight seems good. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a color lookup. Okay, so, and from here you can just play around with whichever looks the best to you or looks good to you. Um, just know that you will never, you'll likely never use it at its full effect. I'm going to reduce the opacity of whichever one I choose here. I'm liking that Fuji turn. Uh, that one's not bad either. All right, let's go with that one. You know what, let's go with that Fuji Turner. Yeah, that one's a little bit more contrasty. And you know, the, the color lookup just kind of blends everything together. Um, we can last but not least do a another curves layer and just mess around and see what we we can do here. It's 
So at this point, you're just adjusting everything to taste, really. Okay. All right, that looks good. Let's look at our... So um, this one kind of had like a, uh, a greenish hint or tint to the background. We can add that by... We can do, a multi do it in multiple ways, but perhaps the simplest way is just to come down here and uh, choose... A green and then just reduce the opacity so you just want the slightest hint of it and there Okay, so let's see this in full screen. Yeah, so that is it. Um, yeah, I hope this was helpful to you. Um, yeah, <laughs> so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, if you have uh, any comments, please leave them in the description. Um, if you have any suggestions about videos that you would like to see, um, leave them in the description. I will make them. If I, I have the time, I will find the time. Um, yeah, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And, you know, ring the notification bell so you don't miss a video. And until next time, have a good one.